Okay, so um, now we're going to start looking at doing supervised classification, which is one of the really one of the most common tasks we do with our with our um, image data. So the goal here is to basically provide a bunch of examples and use a learning algorithm to try to predict the the cover type or whatever it is that you're mapping for each pixel within the extent. So what we're going to be looking at here specifically is using doing pixel based classification using a machine learning algorithm. All right, so just before, before we get started, I just want to make a few notes. Uh, first, uh, there are lots of different, there are some different tools for doing this in QGIS. One tool that people really like is this semi automatic classification plugin. Um, it has some um, utilities for downloading and pre processing common sensor data like Sat Landsat and Sentinel 2. Um, and for doing some prep work and looking at like spectral signatures of classes and then doing the subsequent classification. Uh, I just want to note that that exists. We're not going to look at it. There's also classification tools available like in Saga. Uh, what we're going to look at are the classification tools available in Orfeo Toolbox, which I have loaded in here. So in the Orf Orfeo Toolbox, if you go under Learning, this is all of the different uh, 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 algorithms available. And this is in 7.1, so you know, this list might change depending on what version you're using. Um, all right, so before we can actually run an algorithm, we need to actually have some example data. So in this video, we're going to focus on that. How do we uh, generate our example data? Okay, so I'm going to go down here to uh, my database list, and I should have one for Prague. There we go. So we'll do a create a new layer, and um, we'll, yeah, it's going to be in the there in the in the uh, database there. We'll call it uh, Prog Training, and then we'll set the geometry type to polygon. So note that you can use points and or polygons for training. I generally actually prefer to use points because it like decreases autocorrelation issues with the data, um, but it's probably more common to use polygons, so we'll leave that in. Um, it's important that the projection matches, so um, uh, the, the image and the training data projection matches. So the, the image is actually in this uh, 32633, which is uh, WGS84 UTM33 North. So we're going to switch over to that. We don't need Z or M values. And I'm going to go ahead and add a field called class. And then that's specifically going to be a whole number integer. And we'll add that to our list to, to generate. And it should auto-generate an uh, like a, a unique identifier. Okay, so that should work. So I'm going to hit OK, and we should be ready to go. Okay, so that created a layer there. Um, it, so this is a feature in a geo package. I'm going to go in first and change the symbology a bit. So I'm going to make the fill um, completely transparent, and I'm going to set the mass to something that really stands out against the image, so maybe like a green or something, since we have this RG or this false color image. And uh, oh, actually, I need to change the stroke color to that. So green, and then we'll bump the outline up a little, so it's easier to see. Okay. All right. So that should be our our feature. Now to start drawing. We're just going to go to the pen tool here and then click on our vertis add vertices tool and we can start to draw. So I'm going to start off with just drawing some water polygons because it's probably the simplest of the classes. So I'm going to draw a polygon here, right click to close it. It's going to auto generate an FID and we're going to set the class field equal to 1. So you might be wondering why we're not putting in a text field. And that's because most of these tools are going to expect a code field for each category. So an integer value, which is a stand-in for the category as opposed to text. So you're going to have to remember what codes you want to use. So in this case, we'll assign all the water classes to 1. And if we hit OK, that should add that in. Make sure why it's not showing it. Let's do a refresh here. 
and turn editing off and remove it, add it back in. So prog training. There we go. I'm not sure why it was disappearing on us there. Let's see if it continues to do that. I have an issue. Okay, and then again, we just want to keep making polygons here. Again, make sure you assign the right value to each one. These are again our wa our water categories. Um, I'm just going to draw, and as, as I draw, I'm just going to just give you some pointers. So first off, um, whenever you're collecting training data, it's generally important that you capture the full variability of whatever class it is that you're interested in. So if we're interested in this case in water, we want to make sure we've get the you know, actually capture the complexity of that class in the training samples. Um, so for example, if you have like some areas of like sun glint and then dark water, you would want to have both of those. Some categories might be more variable than others. Uh, so for example, if you had like a, uh, like a developed class, you might have a lot of like paved areas that are kind of homogenous. You might have areas that are like building roof, rooftops that are very heterogeneous. Um, so you want to capture all that. It's also generally a good idea not to... Uh, it's also generally a good idea to uh, capture data across the full image extent. Um, honestly, in this demonstration, I'm probably not going to honor all of these because it takes generally a good bit of time to develop a, a decent training set. So um, I'm just going to try to collect some samples here so we can run through the whole process. But if your goal is to get the best output you can, um, you know, the training data is generally one of the biggest, uh, the most important factors. Um, bad training data is generally hard to fix, even if you're using like a, a really like robust algorithm. Okay, so here's some there's some water examples. So I guess I never really talked about what broad classes we want to map. So let's just have a look at the image in general. So again, this is the city of Prague. So um, in the city, we've got a lot of like impervious surface and building rooftops. We could maybe group all that into a. Uh, um, maybe like a developed class. If we go outside the city, like in the like agricultural areas, we see these bright red homogenous areas. So those are generally either like farmland, pasture land, cropland. So we could do like low vegetation or grass as a class. These duller looking fields could be like um, fields that are in fallow or fields that don't have like any vegetation on them currently. So we could call that like a bear class or like a soil class. And we already talked about water. The other dominant class in this would be like forests. So you can see these extents of forest here. So we're going to shoot for five, five classes. So let's go in here and grab some, start grabbing some examples of, uh, of uh, grass. So again, this is not, um, we're not going to, I'm not going to collect as many as I probably should. Oops. I clicked on the right one. There we go. That one was kind of, let me start over with that. And then we'll, now we need to change our class value to two. Two. And again, just looking in this small window, we can see a lot of just variability just in this one class, right? So um, you'd want to try to capture that in your training data as, as much as you can. OK. And again, I'm not going to collect a ton. So I'm just going to grab one more of these. And then let's grab some examples of these like barren areas. So we'll call that class 3. So three and three. And again, which probably should be doing is spreading these out across the entire image to try to capture all the variability. Now you have to do them in order. Like, um, for example, if I wanted to collect some more water here, I could do that. 
I would just have to remember to code that back to one since that's the stand-in for that category. Generally a good rule of thumb too is before you just run your classification when you're done collecting training data to just like you know go through all of them and make sure you didn't like mislabel something or you know just have some like bad examples. Um, and just for the sake of completion here, I'm just going to grab a couple overdeveloped areas and a couple over forest. So let's do that real quick. So grab this kind of downtown area here. And that's our, we'll call this class four. So this is going to be our developed class. All right, and then I'm going to run down and find a forested area, like this area. And we'll grab a couple examples in there. Now, this is kind of complex. Or some, I don't know if these are like forest clearings or homes. I'm not sure. Um, you probably don't really want to capture that in the inside the polygons. I mean, generally, everything, every cell within the extent that you draw should be, um, uh, should be that class. And note here, I bumped it up to five now since we've got or moved on to our fifth class. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video here, and I'm going to create some more training data. And in the next video, we'll come back with a set of complete training data and move on to like the classification process.